transportation is the lifeblood of our economy. Transit services are so vital to keeping our country running. I mean, all sorts of people use public transportation, and they depend on it. They have no other means of transportation. It's no sense to me whatsoever to build a brand new bus if you have nobody to drive it. What you do as union activists is build the middle class of this country. Working together to secure our future is what the union is here for. That's what we're about. Working together to secure our future. ATU over the last hundred years has um, negotiated great benefits for us. Um, wages are decent, you know, and I tell people that if they just come to work, that they can change their life here. I did. A sense of unity, um, that you're not just on the job with strangers, you're actually on the job with your union brothers and sisters. The ATU represents transit, and that's what school bus driving is all about. Knowing that we have the ATU and the backing of the international behind us, it, it makes every day much easier, much easier. I became a member of ATU uh, a few years after it was organized in the 70s, and in the early 80s I, found, I filed a grievance because I was discriminated on my job, and ATU assisted me, and we won that grievance. So I have been an active member of ATU since then and probably 20 some years an officer of ATU. I think ATU has been very supportive, whether it's, it's at the local level. Um, in our local, it's um, very diverse. Without realizing it, it was not a, a slate or anything, we ended up with four women officers um, a couple years back. And that, uh, they put us on the cover of the International Constitution, that was kind of neat. I guess I'm proud that that's doable without it being a challenge or a hard thing to do. The more you come, get to know what's going on in your life, you're going to depend on this union sooner or later. You're going to have to fall back on it, and the sooner you get to know what's going on, the better. I think the time of the unions uh, losing power, I think you're going to see it come back. I think unions are the necessity. Uh, workers are tired of getting what's left over. And that's basically what happens without a union is they get whatever's dealt out to them. Every day, I see the, the clothes that you wear, you go to the cleaners, the people that clean your clothes, those are the people that, that serve you, that ride public transportation. You go to the grocery stores, those are people that bag your groceries. They, they ride public transportation. I try to tell them that the people that are in the hotels, they're the people that ride public transportation. I try to tell them that public transportation is the lifeline for those people. It's strength in numbers, and that's what the unions are about. Um, the more people we have involved in the union, the, the better chance we are of getting um, the, the standard of living raised and everything else. And I think that's basically what the union is. They're the, the four fighter for the poor little individual that doesn't have a voice and can't speak. There's a lot of people out there that got different opinions of unions, they're mixed opinions, and what we tell them is to let us prove us, ourselves to them. They, if, as long as they come in with a neutral attitude, we'll show them that, you know, and earn their respect, and that we work for them, they don't work for us. 
And I think it's very important to let people out there know that unions are for the entire community and all the working people, not just the union members. Dans, dans mon travail, c'est pour aider à ce qui est pas au début de pouvoir. On, on est respecté en tant qu'individu. On est sur le même pied de stage que le, les patrons. C'est dans le fond, c'est ça. C'est le respect envers envers les autres. C'est pas on n'est pas pris pour avantage. Là. Euh, ben, c'est une très bonne union. Ils sont là pour nous protéger. Ils cherchent toujours à faire à créer de l'avancement des employés. What I know about the ATUs is, as a young boy, um, my father was an ATU member, and, and I can say, uh, you know, we were taken care of. We always had good benefits. Uh, you know, we didn't go without a good paying job my father had. And then when I became an ATU member, I raised five children, um, had good benefits in place, good protections. People can't just go threaten me and make me lose my job. Um, basically, there's rules to follow, and, and you know, the uh, management needs to follow those rules and uh, having a contract in place that protects you as a driver. And we have a lot of people who don't become union officers, but they do a lot of stuff for us, especially uh, pushing legislative things, and getting petitions signed, and showing up at rallies. We had a great rally the, uh, a couple weeks ago where a, a pouring rain out, and a bunch of our drivers showed up down there to support uh, the people that wanted to organize. I said, be a part of it. Be a, be a uh, strong part of it and support I think because they're they're helping us out so much. We uh, we look around and hear things of uh, other districts, and uh, we, we we do it's, it's good. You know, a lot of good things have happened for us. You know, with, you know our pension, the uh, pay raise, and stuff like that. We disagree at first, you know, but then after all the dust has settled, we came out. We come out okay. You know, I'm grateful for them. AT is right there. that everything, all the benefits we have, everything we have has been fought for for a long time. You know, the, the people before us worked very hard for us to get what we have and we need to protect that. We have a basic right to mobility. We have a right to public transportation. And the government has a responsibility to make sure that public transportation is funded. Local mass transit is transportation for everyday people. And we are elected in office to take care of everyday people. This is a state of emergency. It's time to declare emergency and get urgency. Rebuild America now. Millions of people in this region rely on ATU to get to work, health care, and other destinations. We need to restore the service that has been lost in this great city. It is not just about moving people who can't afford vehicles from point A to point B. It's about creating jobs. It's about maintaining jobs. It's about reindustrializing the South as we once knew it. We've had about 12 uh, second stage grievances, probably closer to 10. Um, and uh, we've, we've been able to back the company off or we won every grievance, including three people that have been terminated that we, two of them, um, two of them we've got their jobs back with pay. Here everyone sticks together and I think that's why they have what they have, you know, because they know they're going to stick together and they're going to fight together and they're going to try and get where they want to go. It was good. It was a long strike. We lasted about uh, 53 days. Too bad it was in the winter, but it was something we had to do because of what we would have lost. And I'm still a new driver. I know because of our pay period for two years, we lost the aggression because before I got here, the union, they agreed on it and we lost that on the uh, vote. So that's why I think we had to stick together, but we did a good job, we were united. And the strike, fortunately, it was a bad time for everybody, but we all survived and the winter is a very cold time too. We're a stronger team, united and I think we're very strong. They wanted to break the union. Uh, we are one of the few unions in the city of Ottawa that has the right to strike, and the mayor of the city uh, owns a company. He's a businessman, and he's uh, broken unions before. 
and he thought by taking on the ATU that he could break the ATU. But unfortunately, uh, uh, we were solid, we were strong, we were united. Actually, when we went back to work, uh, they said there would be uh, 500 people laid off, and uh, the membership decided to share their hours. So therefore, they wouldn't get as many hours, you know, 80, 80 hours. So they decided to go maybe with 65, 70 hours so everybody can have work. So uh, it was yeah, phenomenal as far as uh, how united, how strong, and how we ended up uh, at the end, not having one people laid off. Everybody shared their work. Oh yes, it was just uh, incredible how uh, uh, the ATU and the uh, labor movement uh, came and uh, supported uh, the people on, on strike. It was a very uh, emotional thing when you saw your brothers and sisters being there and helping out for the cause. I tell them, you know, to look at the benefits of being a union member and, uh, and you know, it's more than just monetary and uh, benefits. It's, it's the benefit of, of being in that group, you know, where people are looking out for each other. Um, some of the younger people, this is their first shot at, you know, being in a unionized situation. And, and uh, I'm quite sure they can tell the difference, you know, from what they had to what they, they are getting now. Yeah, it's more than a job. It's, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's a way of life and it, it's also, a, you know, a life, a better life. Employees here right now don't have any rights. They don't have rights to question what goes on. Whatever the company gives you is all you get. With the union, you have a right to negotiate or demand respect or re demand what you think you deserve. I had a conversation with the company. We agreed to end the work stoppage and, and uh, meet with the company. Yes votes, 23. No votes, 1. Contract is yes to this end. I said, who in the world would ever think that someone could get laid off with the transit union? It happened. Today it's me, tomorrow it may be someone else. But hopefully I will be here to make a difference. I'm emotional because I'm thinking of my family. When I received my pink slip, 
All I can think of was my two sons, my wife. Now I'm here for the final of my life to try and help them. Oh, I miss my job. <laughs> I really miss my job. I have a 16 year old and I'm a single parent. And the operation funds will really help so I can get my job back. I've been off three months now and it's real hard. It's very hard. So it's like I have to start over again. But with the grace of God and my daughter, I'm getting through it. I need everybody's support, all my co-workers and ATU and everybody all over the world to make sure that we can keep our jobs. Thank you. If you're gonna win, you better have the community on your side. And by going out, most garages now, we have um, what they call on Thanksgiving, we hand out turkeys to people in the community. Every year, at least once a year, we hand out things to the people who live in schools. We had a, uh, a thing at the park where we call a, it was a child's day, a kid's day, where we passed out pencils and pens for people going, kids going back to school. And it may seem like a small thing, but if you didn't have it, it's a pretty big thing nowadays. So understanding that Amalgamated Transit Union, Local 241, passed out pens and pencils to someone who didn't have it, they'll remember that at some point in time. And that will increase your visibility as well. People will appreciate what you do every day. We have to think of our presence in the community in the total, the total gestalt that we are as important in our community as the police department, as the fire department, as the water company, as the electricity or the, the energy. Every part of this community is important, and public transit is just as important as any of those other aspects of our community. Usually you didn't hang out with people you worked at, you saw them at work, and that was enough. Here, uh, true friendships, and we have a job where we have long spreads. Uh, could be here 12 to 16 hours for your spread. Uh, you spend more time here than you do at home. So it becomes a family too. And when something happens with a family member, you know, it, it's part of you. Childcare is difficult for transportation workers. Our hours, this is a 24-7 operation, so our hours, um, they range from extreme early morning to really late night, all night. And trying to find childcare providers to take care of our kids was difficult. And when we did find it, the cost was astronomical. We offer uh, some primary childcare for people who are, have infants and preschoolers before they actually enter kindergarten. We provide a monthly subsidy for the, them if they're approved. And then we have um, a before and after school program for kids who are actually in school. We provide um, a monthly subsidy for them as well. We are the community. That's the way we feel. Um, when we are interacting with people that we carry um, on the buses as well as people coming down here for whatever resources, whatever needs they have, um, we feel like we're servicing our families, our own. You know, because without our community, we have no reason to be here. You know, ATU, we value our community. Well, what we're doing tonight is raising funds for MS, which is the charitable organization for the Amalgamated Transit Union. This is an annual event that Local 113 has been putting on close to 25 years, and where we've raised in excess of a million dollars for MS. Um, Local 113 has done a lot of community events, a lot of charitable community events. This is just one of them that we've been doing. It's very important to Local 113 to reach out into the community because public transit is very important to the community as well as our members. It's very important that we build a bond with the community to ensure that we have good public transit in our city of Toronto, as well as help out some of those communities that may require some help. It's been a long road from a devastating injury to a world record. A 23-year journey for an Ontario mechanic named Rick Ball. He returned home today from a grueling three hours, one minute and 50 seconds at the Boston Marathon. His is a remarkable story of perseverance. In 1986, I had a motorcycle accident. Um, you know, I was riding my motorcycle into town and a uh, pickup truck coming in the opposite direction. Uh, the, he didn't have his lumber tied down and it blew off and hit me in the leg. 
and I was devastated. You know, I was 21 years old, and I thought my life was over. And uh, you know, a couple weeks later, my brother wheeled me around the uh, the head injury ward, and I, you know, I realized there's people worse off. I can overcome this. And a few years later, I. I joined the ATU and I've been a member ever since for over 20 years now. And I think I've turned this disability into an ability. Um, everybody has their challenges in life and mine's more visible than others. And uh, if you put your mind to it, um, you can overcome anything, really. I think I'm living proof of that. The union have been 100% behind me right from the start with my running. Um, because of Bob, I've been able to get the time off work in order to train and compete and get to the level I'm at now. So I'm really uh, I'm really proud to be a member of the ATU. I'm not just training for myself and running for myself anymore, but also for my ATU members. I've been with the uh, Latino Caucus since 2002 when it was established uh, with the blessings of ATU. Well, we're basically, um, we keep an ear out for any type of uh, discrimination issues, but mostly we try to educate. Educate the member on their contractual rights, educate the, the communities on helping one another in, in times of need, and uh, just trying to um, stay focused on doing a good job out here and, and keeping people safe and letting them know, you know that we're out here looking out for them. We have a lot of programs both here and uh, outside. We've got a Black Caucus, which we just formulated. We have a Latino Caucus. Uh, we have basketball programs. We do a lot to bring our membership together with us. It's a lot, motto is it's a lot easier if you're working together. We had lost a, a really good he was a long-term member. He was three years more than me, so he would have been going into his 26th year. Uh, he always had old beater bikes because he had uh, young kids and a bad marriage, and so he didn't have a lot of money. So he bought his first Harley, and he was so excited. And so I, I planned to run for, with, there's like about eight of us that'll run together every weekend. So we all did the run down to Truro, and it was his first run with us, and we all stopped, and then we had our lunch and stuff, and did the long ride back into Nova Scotia, back the long trails, and all around the Fundy, and he called me that night, and he was just like, you know, that was so amazing, you know, I just, I can't wait till next weekend, and I was like, right on, you know, like, this is great, one more person to ride with, and Monday morning, he was driving down Barrington Street and had a massive heart attack and died, so I'm going to cry. <laughs> We lost a lot of members in uh, 2007. It was a bad year. We were at a funeral every month. It was bad, so I decided that we needed to take a day every year for all of us to go together and remember everybody. So I started the first one in 07, and I just had a shirt on, made, it had shirts made um, from Cab Inn in Toronto, of course, because it has to be Union. And it just had on the back of it, um, Highway to Heaven, and on the front it said our first, uh, first annual memorial ride. So I'll let everybody know there that's our first one, which means we're going to keep doing it. So it's officially the second Saturday of August is our day. Uh, we're here to recognize winners of the Citizens Medal. I'm a school bus driver. I'm a member of 1181 Union. This is one of the highest honors a president can bestow. They're waiting for me seven days a week and I'm there. For 40 years, this medal has been given to men and women who have performed exemplary deeds of service for their country or their fellow citizens. Jorge Munoz. Every day I receive about 130 smiles and about 130 blessings. That's the way I feel. Through daily acts of selflessness and humanity, Jorge Munoz embodies a simple idea, that we all have a stake in one another. Each night, 365 days a year, he and his mobile soup kitchen provide free, hot, home-cooked meals to those who would often otherwise go hungry. 
for his compassionate spirit of service and sacrifice on behalf of the less fortunate, the United States honors Jorge Munoz. It's been a great ride the last 50 years, and I'm looking forward to the next 50. We kind of tend to think that today is, it is what it is, and there's nothing I can do about it. Well, I'm just not a big believer that nothing can be done about it. If we can send men to the moon, you know, we can you know, have iPhones now where you can get a movie on your telephone, you know, then we can change our, our existence. But we have to start, begin somewhere, understanding that sometimes that beginning starts with you. It starts with you. Something as simple as you going to a meeting, you'll be surprised that you might be the person to change things. I am ATU. I am ATU. We are ATU. I am 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 ATU. Je suis ATU. I am ATU. We are ATU. I am ATU. I am ATU. We are ATU.